The Giles Files is sponsored by BetterHelp. Affordable, professional online therapy from any device, text, chat, and video. BetterHelp offers licensed therapists who are trained to listen and help you. Join the 2 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with a BetterHelp therapist. And here's a special offer for Giles Files listeners. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash gilesfiles. That's betterhelp.com slash gilesfiles. And thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this podcast. It's the Giles Files Season 3. More Bafo shows, that's a guarantee. Nancy Giles and producer Nancy Wyatt, we got opinions we ain't keeping quiet on the Giles Files Season 3. Yes. I want to be you. Sometimes I want to be me too. (laughs) Yep, producer Nancy Wyatt is correct. Who wouldn't want to be Bobby Rivers? All the big stars want to sit down with him. The man's hosted talk shows, been a radio sidekick, a culture critic, he's a Turner Classic Movies writer, and Bobby was one of our most popular guests from last season. And if you haven't, you should check out that episode. So hells yes, we brought him back to pump him for more of his insider knowledge of Hollywood then and now. And man, does he have stories. Plus, Bobby gives his take on some crazy celebrity trials and more. And oh, by the way, we just love how he thinks. You know, we're always talking about, okay, we're going to bring Bobby back. we got to bring Bobby back. And what, okay, what do we want to talk about? And I had been watching the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial because I love Johnny Depp. But then I talked to Nancy and she said, well, Bobby doesn't want to talk about. It. No, that's not what I said. Exactly. Not, he wasn't interested. What? You know corrected. what? It was on. Some of it just seems so smarmy. I yeah, mean, I, I think saw, the, the word you used was unsavory. Unsavory, that's it. Because I saw her crying. First of all, I didn't even know he, he was married. And I, I know she's an actress, but I'm not a, really aware of her work. So she's crying and she said he soiled the bed or something. I went, I don't want to, I do not want to know this. And so every time, you know, I didn't stay on it. But every time I turned on, you know, he was talking like this. And she's doing the ugly cry. Mm -hmm. And I went, you know, I'm just not interested, but I knew that people were watching it as if it was a TV miniseries. You know. Nance, didn't you say that Johnny, like, never looked at her? Was that a strategy? You will not see my eyes again. That's you and Mr. Depp in that recording. That is. This is after you publicly accused him of domestic abuse. And he kept that promise, hasn't he? As far as I know, he cannot look at me. He won't look at you, right, Miss Heard? Oh, and he means it. He's a method actor. He'll do that. So is there a chance that he can make a comeback with his career? I don't think he's going to be hurt at all. Yeah. He's been in the business a long time. Mm-hmm. So if he was an asshole, we'd know by now. Yeah, you know, you're right. He was with that French girl for 20 years. They have two kids. Right. There was never any problem there. Kate Moss came out and said he never hit me. He never hurt me. He was a gentleman. He never went to bed. Yeah. Oh, my and people God. And people in the business know Johnny. You've made movies with him. He's a great guy. You've gone to his house for barbecue. You think that's going to change your mind? And by the way, all so-called Me Too is not the same because right. there are still women who will manipulate that's not to say that all women do that but like i i remember when there was this phrase going around all women must be believed and it's like no the ones who tell the truth should be believed you look at films of the 1930s and the 1940s and and if a man even pinched a woman and she didn't want they slapped him or like 
Gene Harlow and Barbara Stanwyck punch guys, and and and, and heaven help the man when Barbara Stanwyck had a gun nearby. You know, you're a real sight for sore eyes. Well, I I wouldn't want to get you in any trouble if Mr. McCord happened ah, to write. Let me worry about Mr. McCord, huh? Ain't nobody coming around. There's nobody here but you and me, honey. Give me it. Give you what? Give me that high. <clears throat> Hold it. <laughs> so now you know. He couldn't stop me and you can't. Give it to me. Okay, I'm going to throw to a, 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 another case. I had the same feeling with uh, Jesse Smollett. That whole thing. Oh, my and, God. And here's what, when I heard the news, I went, okay, you're on a hit TV show. People are going to recognize you. You're in a, a very sophisticated hotel in Chicago. Why are you going out at 2 a.m. to get something to eat? And my first thought was, I didn't know Subway is open at 2 a.m. Like, what? You're making a good buck. Why are you going to Subway? And I said, you know what? I have been in hotel rooms where it's been, you know, I've been working and it's, you know, after midnight, I'm hungry. Room service or open the mini bar? I am not suicidal. I am innocent and I am not suicidal. If I did this, then it means that I stuck my fist in the fears of black Americans in this country for over 400 years and the fears of the LGBTQ community. Your Honor, I respect you and I respect the jury, but I did not do this. And I am not suicidal. And if anything happens to me when I go in there, I did not do it to myself. And you must all know that. Oh, my God. What an embarrassment. And how horrible for people when stuff like that really happens. It was bad. It was really just, was. It was just greedy. It you know? re- yeah. You're on a hit show. Your career is going to take off if you behave yourself. And you pull that. And they ended up writing him off. Well, as well, they should have. I mean, a child, please. Bobby. Yes, darling. We had you on in season one. This was before Will Smith and the Chris Rock slap. And this David Letterman thing. Um, it's it's on Netflix. It's not the old David Letterman late night show. It's a no. new program called oh, yeah. My Next Guest Is... Needs No Introduction. Mm-hmm. Right. I always was a fan of Dave's, but these Me too. interviews are fabulous. Well, now, about Will and David Letterman. In this episode, there is a graphic before you get into uh, the interview that says this was shot before the Academy Awards. He tells about his spiritual journey. He had, there was some beverage that he drank 14 times under supervision, right? And when you hear him, some of us boomers, it will remind you of when Cary Grant talked about the great breakthroughs he had emotionally because of LSD. It sounds like this. But Will said that he came out more spiritually enlightened after these 14 sessions. Then you cut to the Oscars, and I went, well, what happened? The notes I took from that interview, I I mean, I just read an article. He was saying during those states he was in, he saw his career flying away and his family flying away and his privilege flying away. And his money, and he said he saw his money flying away. Right. I get to the point where... I settled down and the voice is still at 100%. I still hear Willow screaming. My money is still flying away, but I'm going. And I'm totally calm, even though there's hell going on in my mind. When I came out of it, I realized that anything that happens in my life, I can handle it perhaps a precursor to what was going to happen, you know. Ooh. And you know what? It's not easy for Black folks to come back after having done something. The one person of color I can think of that managed to bounce back from a big scandal is Vanessa Williams. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Because now you, look, now you look at the photos and it looks like your standard Madonna music video. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> But, you know, it brings up an interesting thing because 
right below the surface of this Hollywood stardom are so many scandals, whether it's a sex scandal or a trial. One of the stupidest ones that I remember, and I just wish she'd gone really gone to jail, was that disgusting Zsa Zsa Gabor. You remember that oh, whole God. dust oh, up? girl, where she slapped a cop in Beverly Hills. That was like 88 or 89. 89. Man, you you know that I uh, that I met Lucille Ball and she invited me to her house. Did I tell you that? No. Let's go. Okay. So I'm on VH1. I have my talk show. And a guy that I met through the talk show called me up and he said, Lucy saw you interview Sally Field and loved it. And she likes you. So oh, said, my God. He said, Let's get together and grab dinner or something, but, but call me at Lucy's. And I, okay. So I'm doing my work. I call the phone. I hear, hello. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, it's Lucille Ball. So I'm very polite on the phone. Like, Hi, this is Bobby Rivers from VH1. And Lee told me to call him here to edge you. Lee, it's Bobby from VH1. So he gets on the phone and He's talking to me and she's talking to it. it it's St. Patrick's Day, 1989. And she's saying, invite him over. She gets back on the phone and says, what are you doing at, around like cocktail time? I said, nothing. He said, come on over. She oh gives me goodness. your address. At six o'clock, I'm there. We talked about, about a bunch of stuff. And that day, I had interviewed Ava Gabor. Ava was the one on Green Acres, right? On yes. Green Acres. Okay. So Lucy said, Lee told me you interviewed Ava Gabor today. I said, yes, I did. She said, how was she? I said, she was, not only did she look wonderful, I said, she was wonderful. And the woman who booked the interview was gobsmacked because Ava <laughs> showed up with two dozen red roses gave them to the booker and said, thank you for thinking of me. And Lucy said, that is typical Ava. She is such a class act and she should, she should be doing more comedy, but the business underutilizes her because she's very funny. Then Lucy kind of looked both ways. I went, oh, this is going to be good. I said, Bobby, if you ever have the opportunity to interview the other one, don't. <laughs> she is crazy. And I, I'm laughing as she went, I'm serious. Back in the day, they used to find her in San Diego trying to pick up sailors. I, went, I did not just hear that from Lucille Ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh, I love it. And we're oh. both sitting there with like vodka tonics. And I went, oh, <laughs> this is so great. <laughs> oh my God. What a Hollywood moment. I love that oh. so much. And you know, let me tell you about, about that day. There is a hotel on a side street in West Hollywood that a lot of music industry and TV people use because there's a pool, Alta Loma. Anyway, it's it's well known and it's very comfortable. So that's where I I was shooting interviews for my VH1 talk show. And celebrities would just come to the room and we sit up. So we get to the hotel. And I knew the concierge, he, was, he and I both grew up in LA. And the other people from VH1 went to their rooms and he went, I'm sorry, but your room isn't ready. And it was past checkout time. So it should have been, and, I, and he, he leaned over and he said, Bruce Springsteen and Patty Scalva are in the room. Now, they weren't married at the time, but he said he hasn't checked out yet. I went, okay, you know what, I'll just like, walk around on, you know, Sunset Boulevard, you know, whatever. So I'm walking around, walk around, walk around. You grab a little bite and go back to it. He's still in the room. Walking around, go to Book Soup. Read, 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 read. Yeah, go back. He's still, are you kidding? No. So he checked out like two, almost three hours late. Now, before he checked out, I, I said to Pete, Pete, can you do me a favor? I said, I'm going to write him a, a, a note. Um, would you give it to me? He says, sure. Because I figured, what? Well, you know, he's kind of keeping somebody out of a room and there were no available rooms. Asked him if he would give me a five minute interview to talk about his new album that we could play Bites on VH1. And 
because I only needed like, you know, a couple, two or three sound bites. I didn't need an extensive interview and everything was set up. Pete came back and said, I put it in his hand personally. So he read it, never got a response. So I'm having lunch like outside on the patio and he's like a few tables away with Patty and I'm doing the, you know, <laughs> and that didn't get a response. And I went, okay, maybe he just needs glasses or something. But he never reacted, never responds. And the people at the hotel said, did you get the interview? I said, I got no response from him at all. And then hours later, somebody who was internationally famous before he and I were born invites me over to her house for cocktails. And I went, wow. How do you like that? How do you like that? <laughs> Nancy, what were some of the other things that I've been trying you wanted to talk about? I'm well, just because I love his name. This is old Hollywood. Uh, Lana Turner and Johnny Stampinato. What do you think about that? About that case? When I was at VH1, the mm -hmm. first openly gay person I ever interviewed was Cheryl Crane. She was promoting a book and she just had high praise for her mother. And the Hollywood rumor was that like Stampinato had slapped Lana around and, you know, threatened to cut her face. And I mean, he was really a bad guy who's in the house. So the Hollywood rumor was that Lana Turner really knifed and killed the abuser Johnny Stampinato and Cheryl, loving her mother, took the blame. I wouldn't be surprised. I absolutely would not be surprised. I mean, when you see pictures of him with her, he's he like just, straight out of central casting with like the black silk shirt and the medallions. Really? And the, you know, really? You know, growing up in South Central LA and Central Avenue had an active nightlight scene. And my parents would tell about the stars who would come down to party, you know, South Central nightclubs. And two of them were Ava Gardner and Lana Turner. So, oh, oh. got it. Think of, are you familiar with an actor named James Edwards, the black actor? I might know his face. He was, uh, he was in the Manchurian Candidate. Before Sidney Poitier, there was James Edwards. He should have been a big star, but he wasn't. And it was basically because he was, no pun intended, blackballed because he was dating white actresses and two were Ava and Lana. So, you know, he went back to New York, you know, did stage work and stuff, but. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. And you look at James Edwards and you think, girl, I don't blame you one bit, but she'd have had a more peaceful <laughs> time. If she could have openly dated James Edwards than she did with Johnny Stampinato. Well, there was a whole other rumor that he was, Johnny Stampinato was, let's just say, stomping on Cheryl Crane, mm -hmm. hitting on her as well yes. as Lana, which, ugh, you know. Yeah. You know, she was like, you, you know, leave me alone. I do not have time to be for your foolishness. You know, back then, Gir girls were suspect if they just wore blue jeans. Gee whiz. You know. And I think while that trial was going on, was it in, was she shooting Imitation of Life or was something she was in the she, it, she was, it, it yeah. came after. Oh, so, okay. okay. So Juanita Moore, the black actress who's also in the movie, said she knew that Lana had used a lot of the emotions from that turbulence and trial right. in her in her imitation of life performance. No, I won't listen. There isn't going to be any funeral. Not for a long, long time. You can't leave me. I won't let you. I just heard this, Laura. Patty! Patty! <laughs> no! Yeah, she was pretty, pretty all over the place emotionally in that piece. Mm -hmm. But got mm -hmm. her an Oscar nomination. Lana got a nomination. Juanita Moore got a nomination. And Susan Conner, 
one of those white actresses who got an Oscar nomination for playing a black woman. The last one you mentioned, that's the daughter passing. Yeah, right. she played the daughter. And who was the second woman you mentioned? That was Juanita the Moore played the Juanita mom. Juanita Moore was the mother. She was. Oh, the yes. Mom. The black, the mother. Yeah. Really she was good. so touching. Oh, she my broke my God. heart. Oh, my she, God. Lord, she, she was good. The girl was performing and she went backstage. Are you happy here, honey? Are you finding what you really want? I'm somebody else. I'm white. White. White! <laughs> Does that answer you? I guess so. Then please, Mama, will you go? And never do this again. And if by accident we should ever pass on the street, please don't recognize me. I won't, Sarah Jane. I promise. I settle all that in my mind. Now will you go? That wasn't all I wanted, honey. That was only part of it. What's the rest? I'd like to hold you in my arms once more, like you were still my baby. All right, Mama. All right. Oh, Sarah Jane. Oh, my baby. My beautiful, beautiful baby. I love you so much. Nothing you ever do can stop that. Oh, Mama. Oh, Mama. Mama. I didn't get called the N-word by Troy Donahue. What? Oh, my God. Yes. In the movie, they use In that the word? In the movie. Yes, yes they, they do. Did. And he slaps you know her. You know, old Hollywood, they would just go there. It, you know, if they wanted to make a point about racism, they would use the word. It wasn't like a Hollywood movie being made by millennials. You know, that yeah, yeah. I think we should change the line to you dirty person of color. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you brown brownie. Yeah. <laughs> I slip. Yes. It, you know, I see a lot of <laughs> Nancy, movies like, from... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's ridiculous. I know. We talk about this ad nauseum. It is ridiculous. Look, um, Blazing Saddles is one of the funniest movies of all time. All right, exactly. Mel, you know, Mel um, lampooned racism in that. Mel movie. lampooned racism, and he lampooned okay. Jewish. You know, he did yeah. springtime for Hitler. I mean. And and when they show that movie, when they show Blazing Saddles on regular television, they bleep out every time. And every it's time it's a, and it they, it doesn't kill it. It's still funny, but it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Because yeah. <laughs> mill millennial editors. <laughs> <laughs> but I find when I see movies from the '30s and '40s that they're more honest. They blow me away now. One of the best performances. William Shatner ever gave was as a racist who goes to a small southern town to just raise trouble. Now you may think the problem is simply whether we're going to allow 10 Negroes to go to our schools. That's only a small part of it. I'm in a position to know because the Patrick Henry Society has studied the whole thing. The real problem, whether you like it or not, is whether you're going to sit back and let desegregation spread throughout the entire South. And it's an indisputable fact that there could be no other result. The Negroes will literally, and I do mean literally, control the South. The vote will be theirs. You'll have black mayors and black policemen the way they do in Chicago and New York already. It's from 1962, and it's called The Intruder. And okay. I think it may be on YouTube. The Intruder is definitely worth a look. It still holds up. In the first five minutes, you hear the N-word said by a sweet-looking old lady whose husband is, you know, lazily on the couch. He said, I swear he's got N-word blood in him.
what well, Bobby, what are you seeing these days that you really dig? There's a TV show, a new sitcom that I just love. It's on CBS. It's called Ghosts. What do you love about it? It is so inclusive and it you would not think it, but it's so relevant. Years ago, there was like a soap opera sitcom called Devious Maids. And there was an actress. She just had this knack comedy who could steal a scene with one line. And her name was Rebecca Wasaki. And she's like the Irish redheaded name, Hetty. You have an interracial couple. They don't have to beat you over the head with the fact that it's interracial. The wife falls, hits her head, wakes up and realizes she can see spirits. So all of these ghosts have been living in this house for a long time. And they're from different eras. There is like this colonial closet queen who is so angry. And there was a musical about Alexander Hamilton because they went, I knew him. He wasn't that interesting. There's Hetty, Rebecca Osaki. There's like a, 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 a black blues singer who you don't know, was she killed in the 1920s? There's a Native American. There's a guy named, he was a Viking, his name is Thor. And they, they liked the wife. So they'll take on like issues that are current and everybody, it's great ensemble comedy. It's a delightful show. It's called Ghosts. It's on CBS. And I even I got on Twitter and I'm, I'm on the Ghost CBS fan club. And, you know, I've messaged Rebecca Wasaki. You're on a hit show. I'm so good. I'm all for actors who get regular work. Who's the guy, the, mod, the, the most modern guy, the, the most recent dead guy who doesn't have pants on? A Wall Street yuppie guy. I don't know. I cannot think of his name. It really is funny. It's a funny show. I just love that show. What else? You know, the way the world has been for the last couple of years, you never read a film review of a movie that's described as a feel-good movie. You wonder, is anybody making them? You know, I would love to go to the movies, but I cannot keep up with all of these comic book characters wearing capes. I went, is this a sequel? Or so? And then Star Wars, it's like, and just enough. It's like Yoda, a baby now? I don't get it. So, now it's like too many sequels. So there's a new movie, and I think it's a limited release called Phantom of the Open, starring Mark Rylanska. Well, this movie is based on a true story. It happened in the United Kingdom, so there are surprises in the movie that you don't see coming. It benefits from the fact that Americans didn't know about the story. But you have this this unassuming, sweet, gentle guy who works at the shipyards. He's a family man. He's in his 40s, got a wife, three kids. He can't sleep, turns on the TV, and one night he becomes fascinated with this show about golf. And it just sparks something in his, his spirit. Where he went, I want to learn the sport, and I want to play it. Then he wants to get into the British Championship, which is this real elite annual golf championship he's a smart guy and he and his equally quick thinking wife write letters that get him into the championship so nobody is he's an amateur and they think he's a professional and it takes place in the 70s so the kid two of the kids are twins and they want to be disco champs they go to so the movie's got this great score like <gasps> disco disco music and so dad is in the championship and he must have been the worst golfer in the United Kingdom in the 1970s. He's horrible, <laughs> but he becomes popular because of his perseverance. The movie is so well played. It's such a different story. It is so entertaining. And I'm sitting there, I don't know, it's ending and I'm smiling. It's a feel good movie. It's ultimately about love and never letting your dreams die, no matter how old you are. Well, that's our show. Thanks to our sponsor, BetterHelp. 
Join the two million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with a BetterHelp therapist. And remember, as a special offer to Giles Files listeners, you'll get 10% off of your first month if you use the code betterhelp.com slash Giles Files. That's betterhelp.com slash Giles Files. And a big thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring our podcast. Heartfelt thanks to our pal, the hilarious Bobby Rivers. Bobby has such an impressive body of work. You got to make sure to visit his YouTube channel at Bobby Rivers TV and read his reviews and commentary on BobbyRiversTV.blogspot.com. Trust me, you'll get a kick out of all of it. He is fantastic. The Giles Files was created by Nancy Giles and Nancy Wyatt produced, directed, and edited by Nancy Wyatt, and recorded at our studios in Weehawken, New Jersey. Be sure to check out The Giles Files on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts, and write us a review. Tell us what you think. We want to hear from you. We'll be back soon with another episode of The Giles Files. Okay? Oops. <laughs> a Huda Media Production.